In today's video, we're going to be painting up an ancient blue dragon from the Pathfinder Battles Wizkids line. Okay, so here we have our uh, ancient dragon miniature. Now this is actually supposed to be an ancient uh, gargantuan green dragon miniature, but I already have one as you can see here. Pre-painted one that I got uh, quite a while ago. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting up uh, our one that we've got uh, in a blue dragon style because there isn't actually any big blue dragons and I thought it'd be fun to change a little bit from the norm of what I usually do. Okay, so first up we're going to start off with the base. Now what I've done is I've pre-cut off there's some little pegs on here as you can see that I've just uh, cut off with a hobby knife and I've just scratched up the surface of our base here because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be gluing on some uh, rocks. Now these here are rocks that um, I've made up from uh, Woodland Scenics which have um, been made out of just some plaster of Paris but grabbing uh, either bark or any type of uh, rock terrain or even just a real rock um, would also work for this step. Um, and what I'm just going to be placing on here because we're going to go with a nice uh, earthy desert base here since uh, Ancient Blue Dragons and Dungeons and Dragons and uh, RPG mythology generally hang out in uh, desert so I want to give off this desert feeling here so that's why I'm going with um, these rocks in there and the reason why I textured up the base is just so the glue can stick on there and make these rocks bond a lot easier. Okay so once the rocks have been glued on what I've done now is I've just come in with some PVA glue and I've just grabbed some sand here that I just had on my driveway and I'm just sprinkling it on, uh, making sure that uh, the sand was all dried out and everything beforehand. And I'm just sprinkling on all the areas that we have our glue. Giving it a nice good coating and making sure we get it everywhere on here just to cover up the whole bottom of the base. And then while we're waiting for that to dry we'll move on to painting our dragon. Okay, so now we're moving on to our dragon and we're going to start off with some deep blue here which is going to be a nice dark blue. and we'll because uh, we want a nice dark blue for our base coat and we're going to be covering over um, pretty much everywhere of our dragon so I've got a nice big wide base brush here and we're going to be really going pretty quickly over all the areas that we can see here avoiding just a little bit of the belly and uh, the inside of the wings where the little uh, spines are you'll you'll see as I'm painting this up that I'm just going to avoid the areas where we're going to be doing some different colors so we want to give him a, a nice um, different color like the blue dragons have. Mainly I'm basing this on uh, um, Dungeons and Dragons blue dragon because I like their uh, color scheme. So I'm going to be giving them sort of a brownish belly and some yellow wings. So we want to make sure we get on all these little spines here. You can see since my brush is nice and thin I can go up and along here. I'm being pretty rough with it so don't worry too much in this step because we'll always just paint over it when it comes to tidying it up in the um, next steps. Okay, so now we have our dragon all base coated blue. What we're going to do now is we're going to come in with ultramarine blue, which is a lighter blue than our deep blue here, and we're going to be grabbing a dry brush, and we're going to be dry brushing over all the areas we've just painted to grab all the raised details on the miniature, because it actually has quite a lot of nice uh, scales and bumps all over it, which is going to catch nicely on this ultramarine blue. Um, we want it to stand out, and the reason why we're doing it now is so we can be super rough with it, um, and we don't have to worry so much on doing the spy, uh, the little wing fingers, I guess. I'm not quite sure what you call them, spines or wing fingers. Um, on his wings and stuff, and all over the tail and where the spikes are really easily. And we don't have to worry about trying to get all this blue paint over other areas of the miniature. And then once we have that ultramarine blue done, we're going to come in now with crystal blue, which is an even lighter blue. And we're just going to be doing the same thing again. So that's grabbing our dry brush and going over all the areas that were painted in blue and this is going to help raise all those uh, different tones of blue um, up and really make it pop. It may be a little bit hard to see on camera be, with all the blues being so close but um, with actually looking at the actual miniature you can see the differences in all the, the tones of the blues. 
Okay, now that we have all our blues done, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to come up with Crusted Saw. Now this is going to be a, a deep reddish brown colour. I'm going to be using this to paint the inside of the mouth of our dragon. So I've just come in here with a lot smaller brush as you can see. Sort of just an ordinary painting brush I use so you can really get into the areas under the mouth and uh, by the tongue in there, in there. Just really giving it a good covering overall and just avoiding the tongue because we've been painting that up another color in a few seconds. Okay, so now that we have the inside all painted up, we're going to come in like I said just before, we're going to come in now with our uh, orc blood to paint in our tongue, making sure we give this a nice uh, good coat over top. Now the cross saw is a little bit darker so you'll have to do just a couple of coats here of the orc blood to really get that uh, purplish pink color for the tongue. Okay, once the mouth is complete, what we're going to do now is we're going to come in with hemp rope. And we're going to be using the hemp rope to be doing the colours for our wings. So I've just grabbed a, a smaller base brush um, to cover all this area. It's nowhere near as big as the brush we use for painting the blue. Because what I'm doing here is I'm just going to be painting along the sides of the spines of the, or the wing fingers, whatever, whatever they're actually called. Um, so I can come in here like as you're seeing I'm doing right now and just painting closer to the edge of these spines working out where I want how long I want these uh, finger spines to be um, and picking that out first and giving them a good paint along there so I'm getting the major part of the edge done and then I'll be coming in with that big base brush and just painting over top of that so it's mainly I'm using the smaller one to get in really close to the uh, spines there without having to worry about accidentally overpainting and that's the the benefit of using the small brush like I am for just around the edges there. Okay so now that our base is uh, completely dry and primed up we're going to come in now with some desert yellow to be doing uh, a paint job over all of the little uh, sand that I got from my driveway here and the stony bits but we're going to be avoiding the big bits of stone that I've put on. Now this this will depend on whether you were just doing a plain uh, sand base or if you've added on some rocks like me or some other parts. This part is totally depending on what you're doing the base. But for me I'm going to be avoiding those little bits of rock for just now. And now we have our sand all painted up. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be coming in with Seraphim Sepia now and I'm going to be using the Seraphim Sepia to cover over our uh, rocks that we have here which is going to give them a nice uh, <coughs> orangish sort of uh, brownie color for our rocks. It's going to make it look a lot more like uh, sand and desert rock uh, than if I was to go over with an Agrax Earthshade. I think it would feel like a, a rock that would be in a nice lush environment with the Seraphim Sepia. It looks all dried out and it's sort of the effect that I want to go for. So just giving a, a nice um, effect just on here. And I'm just using it on these rocks as well and just avoiding it pulling up too much on the little spots. Okay, so once all that Seraphim Sepia is dry, what we're going to do now is we're going to come in with Agrax Earthshade, and we're going to be using Agrax Earthshade to cover all of our um, sand that we have on here. So we're not going to be doing this on the rock, we're just going to be doing this on the sand. And you can see here that the Agrax Earthshade is a lot darker than our Seraphim Sepia we put on the rocks. So um, just putting the, the wash on top of the rocks, I feel, gives off a really nice... Uh, natural looking rock than if we were to paint and go over it with a wash. It, it, I'm just taking out an extra step for giving off a, a the result I want by having it this uh, really sun washed um, sort of style with the rock. But the reason why we're going with the Seraphim uh, Agrax Earthshade sorry, on the base is because I want there to be a nice uh, dark brown underneath color in all the recesses of this area and we'll come back later on and fix that up and we can see what I mean when we move on to those steps. Okay so moving back onto our dragon now what we're going to be doing is we're going to come in with Vallejo Khaki and we're going to be using the khaki color to be doing our dragon's underbelly here so the section that I told us to leave before in the earlier steps is what we're going to be doing this and it's just going to save us uh, a few layers of paint here by just avoiding as much of that as I can. As you can see I'm not perfect with it um, I did go over here and uh, accidentally paint over some of the blue and as well as I was trying to figure out how far I wanted to go with the khaki color but what I ended up doing 
is deciding that I wanted to paint all the way up to these little spines here just under the bottom of his uh, throat area. So giving that a nice paint job and a good covering. So it's going to take a few layers of paint to do this, but don't worry about it and make sure you wait for each layer of paint to dry before adding the next. Okay, so once his belly is complete and dry, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be coming in with skeleton bone, and we're going to be using skeleton bone to be painting up all of the horns and spikes on our dragon, except for the spikes on his little uh, wings here. He has some little spikes just on the tips here, you can probably just see in the shot. Um, we're going to be leaving those ones alone, and we're just going to be focusing on the ones on his body, so these two big nice horns here on the front, and we want to also be doing all the little ones along his body, uh, back and he has some t that are also just on the back of his arm so don't forget to do those as well just giving a nice coverage being being careful in here I'm trying to be careful and really trying to work out uh, how I want the how far I want these spines to go so it's not crossing over too much into the the blue of the dragon's body and of course we also want to do the dragon's teeth in the skeleton bone color so just be nice and precise here take your time and really work out how far you want each of these spikes to be um, far down, sorry, and make sure you give them a nice good coverage uh, everywhere as well. This probably take a couple of coats since our dark blue is so dark uh, compared to our bone color here, but just take your time and you'll get there. Okay, so now we have all our parts picked out what we're going to do now is we're going to come in with some Vallejo black and we're going to be using the black to be painting the claws of our dragon as well as those uh, tips on the wings there that I said to leave out before we're going to be doing these in black uh, just to add a bit of difference in color and I feel having some cool dark black uh, claws would be a cool thing on there and add in just a little bit more color to this model so you can see here that we've got all the the spines along the back of his uh, legs there that we did in our bone color. Now remember, uh, picking out these spines is all up to you. I, I wanted to pick out all these ones on his um, back and everything, but if you want to change it up and maybe go all black with all of the spikes or um, all bone color with including these little ones up here and his claws, um, feel free. This is totally up to you, but I'm trying to go for a, uh, a certain look here, so that, that's why I'm doing them these colors. Okay, so while we're waiting for that to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to come back to our base now, and we're going to be using our khaki color again. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be dry brushing this on our uh, base here. And I'm going to be drying it, uh, dry brushing it over a different part. Now, as you can see, uh, this isn't as dry brush as I want. I should have spent a little bit more time getting it off the, um, getting the paint off of the paper towel there. So I'm just covering it over um, as much as you can, and you can see here in the next step, we're going to be going over with a skeleton bone, so you don't have to worry about it too much here, um, and going over it again, just to give some more variations in the color there. Um, it may look a little bit uh, brighter on camera than it is, but you can actually see all the Agrax earth shade and all those uh, the washes and that that we had on there before, um, really pop out in there and you can see all the different colors maybe a little bit hard to see on camera it may all look all like the one color I'm applying right now but uh, it, you can see them all as you're doing this and then once we have all those layers on what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be coming in with mummy robes which is uh, basically just an off-white and we're going to be using this to cover over everywhere as well so we're just going to be doing our rocks here to give them that nice uh, sun bleached sort of look and then with that Sarah from CP, you can see it brings it out like a real uh, tough, worn out rock. So just doing a little bit over there, giving a quick dry brush as well as just doing a little bit over some areas of our base as well to add some more variation to the color. Okay, moving back onto the dragon now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be coming in with some demonic yellow, and we're going to be using the demonic yellow to be painting our blue dragon's eye here. Um, I've gone for a yellow rather than a white or a black. Um, just because I want that really nice pop of color on here and it's also um, a lot brighter than our hemp rope that we have for our wings which is sort of a, a brownie yellow uh, this here is just a straight yellow so really want these eyes to pop out and it's going to take a few layers of paint here because yellow is always a pain of a color to paint over top of anything else especially it's going to take quite a few layers of paint here so don't worry about this, it's totally normal, and I definitely go through quite a few layers of paint to get to the eye the color that I want. 
Okay, now we've gone to the yellow color that I'm looking for. We're going to come back in now with some Vallejo black. And we're just going to be putting in our pupil of our dragon's eye. Now this is going to take some steady work. You see here I've got a nice fine brush and I'm just trying to get the top of that raised part that's already uh, nicely molded into this miniature here. So you can see there I'm just slowly working around so I can get as even a sort of circle as I want. And of course, don't forget to do the other side. And this other side is going to be really tricky with that wing in the way. But just brace it against yourself and just be as careful as you can. And you see, you, you can get it there with just a little bit of practice. But don't worry too much if you go over it. Just go over with those layers of paints again and wait for them to dry and retry. Okay, so now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be coming in with some mummy robes. And we're going to be using the mummy robes to be just doing the tip of our horn. So he's got a nice... Uh, light part of the horn where his uh where the sun's going to be hitting nicely on there and giving it sort of like a worn look so i've actually uh thinned this mummy robes down uh probably about 50 50 mix um with water so it's gonna when it dries it's gonna blend in there a lot nicer than uh, you can see it just slapped on here at the moment and i'm just picking out some of the raised ones that i want to have highlighted in this step it's totally up to you where you want it you may want to put some on the teeth as well um, but just pick out the ones you want to um, give off this effect. Okay, so now what we're going to be doing is we're coming in with some blue tone ink from Army Painter, and we're going to be using the blue tone to wash all over the blue areas of the miniature, being uh, careful not to get it over anywhere that we've already um, painted in another color. Now, I know this seems a little bit weird, painting a um, model that's already blue with a blue wash, rather than if we were to go with some uh, Agrax Earthshade or some known oil to uh, really darken this up. But I feel that um, coming in here with the, the blue tone is going to really bring out all the vibrant colors of our blue uh, back with since we put so many layers of blue on there. Um, and washing them over, the, over with this blue is going to really uh, make all those areas with dry brush all tie in together and it's going to make them pop a lot more. Okay, so once our blue wash is dry, what we're going to do now is we're going to move on with some Agrax Earthshade. I'm going to be using the Agrax Earthshade to be placing on the wings and his uh, belly here. We want to give a nice coat there with the Agrax Earthshade, which is going to really make this uh, liven it up and give it a real uh, like realistic look here. As you can see, the <laughs> washes are great and they, they work so well and so fast adding in that depth and dimensionality to the miniature um, so it's a nice easy result here so just giving off a nice covering with the Agrax Earthshade all over those parts and of course like I said don't forget to uh, do the wings here as you can see trying to avoid the areas where we've already uh, placed the blue wash on so just being very careful here and if it starts pulling up all you have to do is come in with a empty brush, dab it back on and you'll suck that up straight away. Okay, so once all our Agrax Earthshade is dry on our dragon now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to come in with some Sierra from Sepia. And we're going to be using this Sierra from Sepia to be painting up all the horns and spines that we did in our uh, skeleton bone color. So just picking out, so uh, that's even like the teeth and just all these little spines that we've picked out along our arms and the, our tail and stuff really giving them a nice uh, highlight there with the Seraphim sepia and that's really going to make them look like uh, real life uh, horns and bones. Okay, so now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be coming in with some known oil. Now this step here is completely optional, um, but this is me trying to go for as close as I can to uh, dr a Blue Dragon from Dungeons and & Dragons and they seem to have these little uh, spots on their wings and the way I'm doing this is by placing our known oil and onto our brush coating it up really heavy and then just flicking it onto the wing area you may get some little splashes here and there on other places but you won't really notice and if you do you can always just touch it back up but this here is just to give it that uh, more Dungeons and Dragons look I guess is what I'm trying to go for with that but the, remember this again is totally optional you can avoid this step if you want to 
Okay, so now you can see I've glued the drag into the base. So what we're going to be doing now is we're just going to be doing some basing. And I'm going to be doing some basing with a bunch of uh, various supplies I have here. I've got some static grass from Warlord Games, um, as well as some tufts uh, and some army painter tufts as well. So I'm mixing them up with some uh, real dried out uh, desert looking ones and I've added in just a couple of lush ones to mix it all up. Now remember this is totally up to you. You can place them on here however you want. Um, and we'll see that result at the end and see what it comes out like. that you can see now that we have completed changing our gargantuan green dragon into a blue dragon here and this is just one of the cool things you can do with these uh, unpainted pre-primed models which is just an amazing thing that I like to um, do here so since we already had our green dragon I thought it would be cool to mix it up with a different color dragon and since there is no uh, ancient blue dragon miniatures is a cool way to show you how you can get a pretty close example whether you want to use it for D&D or some other role playing game. But with that I hope this has been uh, useful for you guys whether you want to paint it up and change it around like I have here or um, just enjoy watching me paint up these uh, miniatures here. And I'd just like to thank you all once again. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't and I'll see you guys later.